Mimi's Kitchen. Well, as you all know, Thanksgiving is fastly approaching and it just seems like time just seems to fly by. And we think we've got all this time to get everything planned and all of a sudden we realize, whoops, in two weeks and a half, it'll be Thanksgiving. So we want to get um, some of our things ready. Last week we did the green bean casserole, which is a very good side dish for Thanksgiving. And you know, when you read a menu, almost every time you read it has green bean casserole in it for Thanksgiving. I don't know what it is, but anyway. So we got that out of the way. So today we are going to make dressing. And um, dressing is very easy to make. You know, we eat a lot of things and we think, oh my goodness, I wish I could make that. Well, you can. And so it's just a matter of um, getting your ingredients together. So the first thing that you do is you bake a dish of cornbread. Now I wanna show you this. This is Martha White Yellow Cornmeal Mix Hot Rise. Now, the instructions are on the back that tell you how to make the cornbread. And I followed those instructions exact. I doubled the recipe. So this is a nine by 13 dish. And so I doubled this recipe. So that'll give you some idea how much cornbread that we're going to have. So I just wanted you to see that package and see. So now we're gonna take this up. I'll just kind of cut it so it'd be easy to get out of the, the dish. And, oh, it smells good. Y'all, I love cornbread. This might have to save me out a chunk of this for my supper tonight. On second thought, I'll go ahead and make. Okay. So what you do <clears throat> is you take this and you crumble it. And when I say crumble, you really crumble. You don't want any big chunks in it. So if you got a hard spot like was in the corner of the dish, just eat it. But don't don't leave big chunks in it. So we're gonna crumble this up. And since I'm sure you have more to do than to watch me crumble cornbread, we'll be right back. Okay, we've got this crumbled up here. And so it's pretty much got a few little lumps in there. We'll work on those, but all right, now, the next thing is, oh, and by the way, if you have my cookbook, this recipe is on page 26, dressing, right there. So, easy to make. All right, now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get our um, celery and our onions ready. These are the main two um, seasonings that we will use. So we're going to run these through the food processor. Now you can chop them up if you want to. If your family likes little chunks of um, vegetables in their dressing, you can do that. But personally, we don't care for that. So I and you know, my mama always did this, so I guess that's why I did it, why I do it. So, this is our celery. Oh, let's do a little bit more. we'll do is we'll go ahead and empty our celery in here. All right, then we're just gonna put this right back on the food processor. And now we're going to do our onion. So two cups of onions. Put those in there. All 
oh, it would help if I would put the um the chopper in there. So wait a minute. All right, we'll be right back. Now we have the the chopper in there. I've done that before. out. Let's get all of our onion in there. Oh, y'all, you know onion always smells so good when you cook, using to cook with or to just to eat. It just smells good. Okay. Now then, Two eggs. Let's beat them up. And while we're beating them, a stick of butter. going to put a carton this is a 32 ounce carton of chicken broth now I always wondered why my mama had a pair of pliers in her drawer with her things well I found out and that would be why it's just so much easier so we just go put that whole carton in there And we're using unsalted today. And I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Okay, and I'll stick a butter. Now then. This is poultry seasoning. Now I would like to say right now, if you like sage, this is when you would add your sage. We don't care for sage, so I do not put it in my dressing. But I know a lot of people do, and they think that that just makes the taste. So all I use is the poultry seasoning. And this, and you use two teaspoons, and I kind of use a generous teaspoon of that. Whoop. Which, I find to be enough seasoning. Now y'all, we may add some more chicken broth to this because you want your dressing just a little bit soupy so that when it cooks, it uh, it's gonna dry out when it cooks. So you want it kind of soupy so that as it cooks, it doesn't dry out too much. So let's see. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to add a can of broth to that. Okay, this is a 14 ounce, 14.5 ounce can of chicken broth. And so, I think what we'll do is we'll just put all of this in here. Okay. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Now, at this point, you'd wanna taste your dressing just a little bit, just to make sure you have enough of everything in it. And it's just kind of, that's good. And that's enough of everything. <clears throat> I'll tell you, let's put a little more seasoning in it. Especially since we use that unsalted broth the first go round. Get my spoon here. 
Now, I would like to say, this is, this is a lot of dressing, so I don't know how many people you serve on Thanksgiving Day, but this is a lot of dressing. And so, um, actually, today is Saturday, and what we're doing is we're kind of making some of these things ahead so that we can make them and cook them and show you the whole process. So, tomorrow for Sunday lunch, we're going to have some dressing, because I'm having chicken rolled and bacon and some other things. And uh, we're going to have some dressing tomorrow, but I'm also going to freeze a pan of dressing. So let's get over here. And we will... Fill this pan here. This is a 9 by 13 casserole dish. Now that will be for Sunday lunch tomorrow. And then I am going to freeze this one uncooked and cook it on Thanksgiving morning. So if, if, if you need this much total dressing, then you can make it ahead and you could actually freeze both of them. And then say on Wednesday night, take it out, sit it in your refrigerator, and then cook it on Thursday morning. So you didn't have all this preparation to do. So it would make it really a time saver for you and, and um, get you like a step ahead. So this is just a pan and it comes with a tin top. Fold it, just cover it like that. And then we're going to stick that in the, the freezer and then I'm going to cover this and um, put it in the refrigerator. And then I'll take it out in the morning when I'm cooking my stuff for Sunday lunch. And I'll cook it so tomorrow when we come home from church, I will show you what this looks like. And so uh, we'll be back in just a minute because I'm going to show you now how to make the gravy that goes on top of it. So that's um, our dressing and we got that already. So we'll be right back. Okay, I would like to say on the dressing, you cook it on 350 degrees, and it needs to cook about an hour. You can kind of tell because the top of it gets brown and kind of dry looking like cornbread. Now, if it, if it gets too dry, trying to, you know, cook it out, or if you forget it and, and you look at that, oh my goodness, melt your stick of butter, and just pour right over it, and that will um, help to make it moist. Now, we're going to make the gravy, and it's called giblet gravy, but I just make it just with chicken. And so today, what I did is I got this, it's called short cut carved chicken breast, and it's made by Purdue, and it is nine ounces. And what I did, it comes in little strips, and I just cut it in little chunks. So we're going to turn this on, let it come to a boil, and then I've already boiled my eggs and chopped them up. That's three eggs, and I peel them and chop them up. And so when this um, comes to a boil, and that's just chicken broth in there. That was a, a carton of the chicken broth, just like we used in the dressing. So. We're gonna let this come to a boil, and when it does, I'll just show you how we put all the rest of it together. Now, I have already boiled this about, I would say 15 or 20 minutes, because you want the chicken to be tender and, and not real, um, real tough in there. In fact, really it's good just to kind of shred your chicken. But, um, and a lot of times after you cook it for a while, it will do that itself. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put our boiled eggs in there. Y'all, this is my favorite part. I like this just, just on rice. And of course I love it on gravy, because gravy, I, I mean on dressing, because dressing's one of my favorite things. And we'll just, let this come to a boil and we'll just be right back. Okay, now, 
Caroline, get over here and let's show them how this is coming to a boil. So that's our egg, our chicken, and our broth in there. Now this is cornstarch and water. And I put about a fourth of a cup of cornstarch. And then I just, I think it's um, all the way up to one cup. So I just put water in there. And that just helps it so that it doesn't lump. Now I had one of my viewers tell me about something called One Drop, but I hadn't been able to find it in our grocery stores. And they say it's good for making gravy. So I don't know, I might have to go on Amazon and try it sometime. But this is gonna be a nice thick gravy. We'll make it just a little bit thicker. And the good thing about this is, is if you get it too thick, you just put some more broth in it, or, or water, actually. You can put water in it. And so, so that's what you eat on top of your dressing. Let's see, that doesn't show it very good. All right, we're gonna cut that off. And y'all, you can make this the day before. Now, what I will do with this is I will put this in a, I don't know, even a bowl. Well, I'll probably put it in a jar because tomorrow I'll put it back in this pot to heat it up for us to eat on our rice and our dressing tomorrow. And so, see, it's nice and thick. So you can call this. Most people call it giblet gravy, but we didn't make it with giblets. Now, I would like to tell you about our Thanksgiving this year. We always have so much to be thankful for. And as a family and um, the things that the Lord has provided for us that we don't even have to ask for, but he provides the sunshine, the rain, the air that we breathe, just everything that we just don't even think about from day to day. But this year, we will be more than thankful on Thanksgiving Day. I have not mentioned this previously, but on October the 18th, my son had a heart transplant. His birthday was the 19th. So when he had the heart transplant, that 18th, that afternoon, they started at about four o'clock and they finished everything by about 10 o'clock that night and um it just so when he woke up on his birthday on the 19th he had a new heart i just can't even tell you what this has meant to our family because he um has a new lease on life and you know god provides that for us and so we are just so thankful so this year, we are more than thankful for Thanksgiving Day. He has two children, and of course, he has two sisters. And uh, we have just a wonderful family, and he has two grandchildren. And so we were all um, just amazed at how fast the process took. He went in the hospital a week before. He had been in the hospital, though, for two weeks here in town. And when they decided there was no more that they could do for him, they sent him to Charlotte and uh, for a group called Sanger, who specializes in hearts. And they were the ones that made the decision that he would have a new heart. And so one week from the day they made that decision, a heart became available. And that is just phenomenal, just such a short period of time. And so when he, the first day that he had heart failure was his daughter's birthday, September 19th. He got his new heart on the 18th and woke up on his birthday with a new heart. And he got to come home on November the 1st, which is his son's birthday. Now y'all, only God could orchestrate that. So what a wonderful feeling. And so what I would like to encourage is for you to be an organ donor. His life now is, is just beginning with second wind. And so we're just so thankful. So this Thanksgiving will just be 
extra, extra thankful on Thanksgiving morning. And by the way, he's home and he's doing really good. He'll be going back for checkups and of course he's not jumping rope or anything like that, but, but he is doing wonderful. And so just if you'll continue to lift us up in your prayers and as we continue on in this journey and just know that God is so good to us. So I hope you have a good rest of the day. And so tomorrow when we come home from church, I will show you this dressing and then we'll wind this up. Okay, we're home from church. And just like I promised, we'll show you the dressing, but I'm also going to show you what we're serving today. So we have got rice here. This is chicken covered in bacon, barbecue chicken, mac and cheese. This is our dressing and our mashed potatoes. And then this is our gravy that goes on our dressing, our rice. We've got lima beans, we've got squash and onions, green beans, black eyed peas, fresh pineapple, candied yams, um, pear salad, this is our um, deviled eggs. And then for dessert, we've got either strawberry shortcake, this is lemon pie, this is um, Oreo pie. So I wanna show you one of my little taste testers here. Collins, Helen, do you like Mimi's food? Yes. You like it? Yes. Show, eat a bean for me. Can you eat one Can of the beans? Can you eat a bean? Eat a bean. Here you go. <laughs> is it good? Is it good? <laughs> I'm camera shy. Okay, he's been eating my food for a while. He's just about 19 months old, and so um, we just love having family together. So today's a beautiful day here in South Carolina, and we're just so blessed. So we're getting ready to ask our blessing. I hope you have a good rest of the day and a good week this week. Just shine for Jesus.